Hey, Stephen. Hiya. How's things? Good, thank you. You represent the Campaign for an English Parliament. Is it a movement? Is it a political party? Is it a group? Um, I suppose you would call it a pressure group, a parliamentary pressure group. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is a one-issue group, but the term English Parliament um, encompasses a lot of things. Um, it's not just the place where um, an English Parliament would be, and but it makes, you know, who, who, who gets voted in, you know, what is the voting system, you know, that's that sort of thing. How does it... Uh, uh, compare with the Scottish Parliament on the Welsh part. You know, it, it's it's a it's a it's one issue, but it's an issue with many facets. Would it sit alongside Westminster? Um, well, that that really depends how it's set up. I mean, if it's if it were set up along the lines of the Scottish Parliament, then yes, it would. It would just be, um, which was how it was really envisaged by the people who founded the movement, um, that it would be like the Scottish Parliament, sitting with Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. At the moment, in terms of how well modelled this English Parliament would be, there's this kind of, it's an evolving process, it's still the detail of how it would operate, is that still to be oh, yes. worked out? Yes, yeah. we generally ask people, what is it you would like? You know, where should an English Parliament sit? You know, how many MPs should it have? Um, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, the general consensus so far is that the Westminster uh, House of Commons is vastly overmanned. So in terms of the um, representation, the, the parties that, that make up the, the English Parliament, would they run along the same lines as the um, Westminster set? So would you have a, a Conservative and a Labour Party or would they be... Or would you hope that it would be different parties, new parties with different uh, political agendas? The Westminster parties don't represent England. I mean, even when MPs are sitting for English constituencies, they don't represent England. They represent Britain and they represent their party. Um, and that's something we need to get away from. We, we need people in Parliament who want to be there for England's sake. Uh, just going back as well to the the remit of the English Parliament, that it would just purely be people um, representing England. So I know at the moment in, in Westminster, I think Scottish MPs can still vote on matters affecting uh, places outside of Scotland. Um, but yeah. English, I think, doesn't work the other way around. I think MPs in Westminster can't. Scottish MPs in the Westminster Parliament have virtually no say over Scotland whatsoever. Um, but they have a disproportionate say over England. Um disproportionate in the in the voting as well because although Scotland only makes up I think it's eight percent of the population of the UK they actually make up sort of 12 percent of the MPs in Parliament mm. so you know they're overrepresented in 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 more than one way all of this has got to be worked out I mean I, we're not trying to preempt anybody which is why we ask the public what they feel it should be mm to get the most representative system. And this is still an ongoing process. When you're out on the road and you talk to people about Westminster and, and the political system, do you get a sense that there's increasing dis dissatisfaction with the way it's run, with the whole system? Do you think it needs a top-to-bottom reform almost? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah, people are, are very discontent with Parliament at the moment. But, you know, Parliament, as it stands, it's got too much power and too much money, so it's never going to reform itself. You know, it, it needs a radical reform, and that really is an English Parliament, you know. Um, but Westminster will never reform itself, because, as I say, they're getting too much power and too much money from the system as it stands. And no matter how much bad behaviour um, from them, um, we find out about they're just so thick skinned they shrug it off and think they can continue to carry on as normal you mentioned that you would scrap the house of lords i think a lot of people fail to understand quite what the house of lords do that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the house of lords is there to scrutinize government policy well at least that's what we're told at the moment, the House of Lords is is non elected. I think is it, they're appointed, or have they I got are, that right? Yeah, they are appointed. But the whole thing is outdated. Not just the Lords. Um, 
you know, this, this sort of shows in the way that Parliament itself disregards things at times, like it changes county boundaries, you know, it changes constituency boundaries whenever it suits itself. So in terms of um, going back to the campaign for an English Parliament, what would you say are the, the key challenges that it faces over the next five years? Oh, the same challenges it faced over the last five years, um, the hostility of Westminster. Uh, it- um, do you have a petition? Is there any platform that you use to to galvanise support? I think there's a, a petition where if there's so many signatures that has to be debated in the in the House of Commons. I mean, is that is that a route you take? How are you trying to change the the, the MPs? We've, we've had we've had a couple of petitions which were handed in years and years ago. We haven't done one lately. Mm. Um, we lobby MPs, uh, which is getting increasingly hard. For instance, a few years ago, I was at one of these big tent festivals uh, with an old conservative friend of mine, and he introduced me to the conservative MP who was organising it. And as soon as I said, oh, hello, uh, chairman of the campaign for an English parliament, he just turned and ran. (laughs) No no pretense at all. He just turned and ran. And... um, and that sums up Westminster's attitude to us at the moment. The presumption of unionism is what all MPs in Westminster, I think, consider. And the presumption of unionism is that England must be ruled from Westminster and that England's identity must be British and that England's nationhood must be denied for the preservation of the union. And that's really the line that most MPs uh, take. I wonder if if Scotland uh, does vote for independence, whether that will change that thinking, because Scotland and England are the big big partners within the union. So I wonder if that will cause people to a maybe think about an English Parliament in a different way, and whether that will force MPs to reevaluate or reassess their opinion of the union, because essentially, without Scotland, that's that's a huge part of the union that's that's not there anymore. Ireland would certainly uh, reunify, uh, which would only leave England and Wales. Um, I mean, Scotland is a is a big part of the union. There's no doubt about that. Um, and when the la- and when the Scottish referendum was on the last. Uh, referendum they had for independence it it boosted us enormously in England Um, so yeah I mean it's a game changer you know even if they even if they just have have another referendum and the nationalists lose it it's a big game changer because it, it 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 makes England think of itself I think that's a very good point actually the the road to devolution, so the Welsh Assembly, the Northern Ireland Assembly, and the Scottish Parliament is is it's made people assess because they there are things there are tangible things that, that are done differently in other parts of the union, and I think it's those practical things that are different, like the the, the um, free uh, no tuition fees in Scotland, uh, free prescriptions in Wales. And um, they just make you, those are everyday tangible things that affect everybody's lives. And I think people do think, why is that like that? Why do they have that? And we don't. And then you look at how they're governed and maybe that's one route to make things more equal. I mean, don't forget also, they have those uh, things for free because of the Barnett formula, which is a tax that's raised on the whole of the UK but which is only distributed to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Have you ever considered forming um, the Campaign for an English Parliament as a, as a political party? We never did. We never did because we wanted to have access to all the parties. We wanted to be able to speak to all of them. And of course, if you're a, an opposition party, you know, you, you, they're just not because you are an opposition. Um, so we've never, ever thought of becoming a political party. Um, just for that reason. Um, but of course, the op- options are open. I mean, the fact is that they just won't talk to us anyway. Um, but I don't think the people would want us to become a political party at, at the moment, you know, because we can talk to them as um, English patriots rather than people out for their votes and their money. And do you think with the uh, with Brexit, with we've already mentioned the devolution within the United Kingdom, there's more 
there's a, a, a more appetite there's more popularity for um reform and for an english parliament do you think that's the general movement of of things do you think people want more local politics that's more representative of them um well th- th- well that, that's the buzzword isn't it when you're talking of english devolution and um westminster is, is always on about regionalization you know city mayors you know the northeast parliament a northwest parliament a southwest parliament and so on um i I, I'm very skeptical about whether it's bringing democracy to the people. Um, I think it's more to do with breaking England up so that England doesn't have a national voice. Um, and also it makes England very much weaker. Um, if you can deal with, you know, a certain part of the country and make sure, you know, it just, break, it, well, it, it breaks up our national conscience. It breaks up our national voice. If this was a way of bringing um, more democracy to the people, why not just not give the county councils more power? Why do you have to set up regions? Why why does there have to be a North West Parliament or a a, a West Midlands Parliament? Why not just give more power to the county councils? But making up regions that are just based on the points of the compass is, is, you know, People are going to have no allegiance to that, which is why when Labour tried it up in the northeast, um, it was soundly rejected. We just have to be careful that if there is a, an English Parliament, it's not just an extra layer of bureaucracy. I think that's what people are concerned a lot of. Well, yeah, this is one of the things the politicians always bring. Up. Oh, we don't want any more MPs, so we won't have an English Parliament. They're talking about bringing in nine regional parliaments and God knows how many more MPs. I mean, if each regional parliament has 100 MPs to it, that's an extra nine MPs. It's it's a dead argument as far as we're concerned. They, they, you know, we can't have an English parliament because it means extra MPs, but we're going to give you regional government that will have at least 900 MPs. I mean, it's ludicrous. Do you, from talking to um, people in political parties, do you get... Is it always the case that they run away as soon as you mention the campaign for an English parliament or is it that publicly they can't be seen to to endorse it or be a part of it or near it? Is it something they can't openly discuss or do you think genuinely there's, a, there's an apathy there? They don't want to discuss, uh, discuss it? Yeah, all of those. Absolutely all of that. It, 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 it depends. Some MPs talk to us, um, but most don't. And most probably don't talk to us because they think, well, I don't be seen talking to these people, you know, otherwise the prime minister is not going to give me a job, you know, or they genuinely you know, don't like the idea of an English parliament. So looking towards the future then, so you, are you looking to um, hold campaigns uh, across the England? Is, is that the plan to kind of build up, support that way to just spread the message of what an English parliament oh, yeah. is? Well, yes. Well, in the past, we've we've had to do it that way because the media won't give us any coverage whatsoever. The press is, uh, is wholly against us just as much as the MPs. Why is These that? These days, of course, we have, well, any number of reasons. You know, uh, the press are pretty left-wing, therefore they're very internationalist, therefore... Anything that's nationalist is, you know, not just supported by them. Um, they have too many friends in Parliament who they try to please. Um, some of them genuinely think it's a bad idea, I suppose. Um, but those who think it's a good idea, you know, just don't just don't get the airtime. Um, yeah, we, we've not had a, a, a great deal of uh, luck with the press uh, in, in any way. Um, But, of course, we have the internet now. Um, Most of us are not really that savvy with the internet, but we are learning. Um, So that should hopefully help us bypass um, the mainstream media. But then again, we are, as I say, from this July, we are starting up our uh, campaign of public meetings again. So we'll get out there and and spread the word. So this is where people can come along... Uh, listen to what you have listen to your message and ask questions oh yes yeah 
it, it is it is a shame though that the mainstream media are ignoring you they have to a degree um slowed the campaign down obviously if we'd have had proper press coverage you know we'd be much better known than we are um but it hasn't stopped us getting support it hasn't stopped people you know supporting us um and i I suppose it ever will well Stephen, thank you for talking to me it's been it's been really interesting and i know a lot of people are interested to know about what the campaign is about, um, progress to date, and where you hope to go. And, and I think it, it's healthy to have these discussions. And um, thank you.